When I was a little girl, I was a lot of things, <laughs> and I wanted to be a lot of things. I was a maker, creating castles for my Barbie to live in. I was an inventor, coming up with the latest gadget that people were going to be able to use in their homes. I was an engineer. I wanted to take everything apart and find out how it worked. I was a detective, always looking for clues, trying to find treasure. I was also a coder. I would create secret ciphers and send them to my imaginary friends, eagerly awaiting the message that came back to me. I was a crafter, constructing origami cranes and learning how to sew. And so I did a lot of things. And I made a lot of things. And I was a very big believer in magic. However, something was missing. None of the things I made looked like real things that people would hold. They weren't made of metal. They weren't really made of plastic. They weren't someone, something that someone would buy in a store. And I found myself getting really upset about the fact that I was just a kid and I couldn't do anything and I wouldn't be able to make an impact on the world. I thought that my dreams were magic. I thought that the spy glasses I wanted to make with clues on the screen that would make me see in the dark would actually be a real thing. But instead, I was making slingshots and rockets out of cardboard tubes, and it wasn't really going anywhere. I had a feeling that I wasn't the only one who felt like this when I was a child, and so I asked some of my friends. Text rat wanted to invent an anti-gravity device. He said that he did a lot of sketching, but obviously zero building. And I still think that that would be amazing. One of my friends, Sarah Chips, she made a lot of cleaning solution mixing experiments. And she also killed it in her brief career as a fashion place fashion designer. Now, I, I feel the need to explain that she's gone on to create a lot of cool wearable tech projects. And she is actually a software engineer that teaches people how to do this, so that's awesome. A flying car that ran on pollution. Don't we all want that? He sketched and made balsa wood model of the appearance, but he never figured out the details. Jeremy designed a stovetop range that would use pressure to sense where pans were and heat those areas. Now, the important thing to note with this is that 20 years later, and this actually exists, and I feel that he felt powerless as a child to begin working on this idea. He probably didn't know that he wanted to be an engineer. He just knew that he wanted to do these things. And so after thinking about this, I became content with my limitations as a child. Some of that magic that, that we all have as a child sort of faded a little and I ended up getting into software engineering instead. So how does this relate to 3D printing? So 3D printing was actually available when I was a child. And it was available in the 80s, which was when I was the age trying to create things. But it was locked under patent. And so in 2006, uh, sorry, 2009, that came out of patent. And we now have 3D printers today. So what does this mean? Like, what does this mean for people who are my age, oh, sorry, who are the age that I was now wanting to create these things? This printer here is $400. And I think that's a pretty big deal. I think that's pretty approachable. You know, you can buy gaming consoles and mobile phones for more than that. So I think that's very important to note. And I wanted to share a couple of things that I've found that children have already been capable of by using this amazing technology. This here is Maker Sylvia. Maker Sylvia is extremely famous on the internet. She has a video series where she teaches kids about physics and engineering and, and STEM and maths and everything. And right now she's holding up an etched circuit where she's showing you in the video how to make your own etched circuits. Isn't that just the most awesome thing when you're a kid? She is 12 years old, okay? And I met her last December and I was 3D printing a bunch of things at a robotics conference. And she came up to me and she said, I want a, like a claw. I want a claw that opens and closes that I can control with a motor. And this sounds like a pretty standard kid thing. And I was like, absolutely. I can absolutely do that for you. And so I printed it out. I gave it to her. You know what she did with that at this robotics conference? Which she was the keynote, by the way. She 
attached it to a drone and she was using it to pick up dog treats and deliver them to puppies. And I think, I think that's just wonderful. It's a, there's a wonderful use of 3D printing. This here is uh, Mason Wild. Mason is 16 years old. He's the person at the front of the picture. And he noticed a friend at his school was being picked on. He noticed that a friend was a little bit different from the other people. He had a defect with his hand and his arm. And so he thought, I can do something about this. You know, this kid can't afford a $40,000 prosthetic arm. Why don't I just make him one? So he went on the internet. He downloaded an arm model. He spent three painstaking hours resizing it to fit his friend. And he then spent a further eight hours printing that out, and that was all that was required. And so here he is pictured. Um, this is from American Profile. And uh, they're actually, like, really amazing friends now as well. And uh, he can actually have use of his arm. And you know what? He's kind of become cool now. <laughs> and it's funny how that just comes around, huh? So um, I look at Mason as a, a, a bit of a, a hero in my eyes. Now, this is not a child, <laughs> in case you were wondering. This is Buttercup the duck. Now, Buttercup was born with a backwards foot, and so it had to be amputated because he kept dragging it along the ground. His owners decided that, you know what? Normally, we wouldn't be able to do anything, but we, we have a lot of empathy for this duck and we want to do something about it. And so they designed a 3D printed leg. They got crowdfunding to, to further design and imp uh, improve the design. And that duck now walks. And I, I urge you to search for Buttercup Duck 3D printed leg because there's a very heartwarming video of him running along the grass and quacking every single second that he can because he's so excited. And I think that's beautiful. And so these are kind of just the tip of the iceberg of what I've just seen kids do. And it's done. I just want to talk about a couple of things that I've done really quickly as well. So this here is called the PER bracelet. And PER is an acronym. It stands for Personalized Ultimate Reassurance Response. Now, I suffer from anxiety. And uh, although I know when I'm actually having a panic attack, which could be anywhere, especially at work, I don't know when it's coming. And so for a hackathon, I decided to create a bracelet that measures your heartbeat. And if it senses your heartbeat's getting really fast, it will send out a text message of a kitten to chew you up. <laughs> and so that's my app there working. And I created it for an AT&T hackathon using the AT&T API. So it was super fun. Um, but the, the cool thing is that that housing that you just saw was 3D printed. I took this 3D printer to the hackathon. It was a two-day effort. So if this is a two-day effort, imagine what a child can do. Imagine how much more magic a child can imagine for an idea. And I just think that this is such a pedestrian idea that I can do in two days. Imagine what a kid can do with this. These here are my prized shoes. They're called Meow Shoes for good reason. Um, it was for another hackathon. I 3D printed a holster to go on a belt so that I could hold the circuitry on it. And this circuitry puts some pressure sensors in the heels and the toes of my shoes. And as I push, I can actually sequence up a real live music sequence on my computer. And um, the reason why they called Meow Shoes is because I uh, kind of created one of those keyboard voices where it was just meows and annoyed everybody at the hackathon. And you know, it was pretty funny. <laughs> and so I just wanted to give you a quick taste because 3D printing is, is always hyped up. And people just think it's for, bit, for printing out trinkets and things like that. But I honestly believe that, you know, after, even after seeing Howard's talk about how children know how to play, they know what magic is, they don't know what failure is. You can't tell them they can't do something if they know that they can do it. They're going to go and do it. They haven't lost that magic. They're not like us. They're not looking for the man behind the curtain because we're so scared in believing in magic that we'd rather just find out then, then take a risk of being hurt or fooled. And I think that we have a lot to learn from children in that respect. And I think that we should actually let them take advantage of this technology in order for us to be able to learn from them. And so I thought it would be fitting to let my 3D printer have the last word, especially since it's been such a pain today to get going. And it is very hot in here, so I'm just adding to the heat. I promise I'll be able to get it up in just two seconds. 
So what do you say, 3D printer? Well, in case you can't see that, they're the tiny little words, and they say thank you.